This is section 4.4, Indeterminate Forms and L'Hopital's Rule. So when evaluating limits in chapter 2, we saw methods for evaluating limits that were indeterminate. So what I mean by that is we had the limits such as this, x squared minus 4 over x minus 2 as it approaches 2. When we plugged in 2, we got 0 over 0. If you remember, what we did in this case is we simplified the top or the bottom. In our case, we can simplify the top. So what we get now is x plus 2 times x minus 2 over x minus 2. We can cross out the x minus 2's and we get x plus 2. And then we can plug in and we get 4. Now we're going to learn a new rule that we can use to find the limit of such functions when crossing out is not an option. This is called indeterminate forms. There are competing interests or rules and it's not clear which will win out. So if we go back to this example, on the top here, this is zero and this is zero, so we're not sure if it's going this or this is going to be the appropriate answer because that is an indeterminate form. So we typically think of a fraction that has a numerator of zero being as being zero. But we also tend to think of fractions in which the denominator is zero is undefined. So there's another case. What about infinity divided by a negative infinity? We don't know if the real limit is infinity or negative infinity. And what I mean by win out is like there's a little battle between the two and is the top the right one or is the bottom the right one? And we're going to go through these problems to figure out which one is the winner. So if the numerator of a fraction is going to infinity, we tend to think of the whole fraction going to infinity. But this case, the denominator is going to negative infinity. And, we, and when that's the case, we seem to think the fraction is going to zero. We could also view this negative infinity divided by negative infinity as a fraction in which the number and the denominator are the same, so we might get negative one. With all these instances and all these problems, we're not really sure what the right answer would be. So in this case, we're going to have to take the derivative and find another possible, find out which of those possible answers is the fact, in fact, correct answer. So this is the problem. We don't know what's happening in the limit. So there are other types of indeterminate forms as well, such as these, zero divided by zero, infinity divided by infinity, one raised to infinity, zero raised to the zero power, infinity raised to zero, infinity minus infinity, or zero times infinity. Because all of these things, we really don't even know what is happening when we say this, like infinity minus infinity, what in the world is that? We don't know. So we have to do something else to figure out what is going on in that limit. So this section will give us a new rule for evaluating those limits. So L'Hopital's rule, suppose f of x and g of x are both differentiable, and g of x cannot be zero because it's on the bottom, then we don't have a function, correct? So on an open interval containing a, except possibly at a. So if f of x and g of x are as such, with f of x being the numerator, g of x being the denominator, produces the indeterminate form, zero over zero or infinity over infinity, at a and the limit of the derivative then equals l, then we can say that the limit of f of x divided by g of x equals the limit of the derivative of f of x divided by the derivative of g of x equals our limit. And we'll find out which one wins out. So find the limit as x approaches 1 of ln x divided by x minus 1. Use L'Hopital's rule where appropriate. So first things first, we need to plug in 1. So when we plug in 1, we get 0 over 0. That's indeterminate. So we need to find something else. Next, we need to use L'Hopital's rule and take the derivative of the top and the bottom. And then we'll plug it back in. So if we take the derivative of the top and the bottom, we get 1 over x divided by 1. Because we know the derivative of ln x is 1 over x. And right here, the 1 disappears and we're left with the one that appears in front of this x. Therefore, the limit equals one divided by x, which is one divided by one, which equals one. So calculate limit e to the x divided by x squared as x approaches infinity. First, plug in. So if we look at this, e to the x, as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger is going to approach infinity, and so is x squared. 
And we don't know what infinity divided by infinity is, so we're going to have to use L'Hopital's rule since we have something on top and on bottom. So now we're going to take the derivative. Uh-oh. When we take the derivative, we get infinity divided by infinity again. Now we continue L'Hopital's rule, which says just take another derivative. And we take the a derivative again. Now when we take the derivative, we get the answer to be infinity. So we know that as the limit as x approaches infinity of e to the x over x squared, it is infinity after we've looked at both of the derivatives. So evaluate limit of x ln x as x approaches 0 from the positive side. First, like always, plug in. So as x approaches 0 from the positive side, we get 0. But then ln x approaches negative infinity. So what we really get is 0 times negative infinity. So we're saying that 0 times negative infinity is 0, which we know is not correct. And we don't really know what 0 times negative infinity is. So we're going to have to use the rule. But in this instance, it's x times ln x. We have to have something on top and bottom to use L'Hopital's rule. So in this case, we're going to rewrite the problem. So if we rewrite it, I can write the limit as x approaches 0 from the positive side of ln x divided by 1 over x. Because x times something is the same thing as 1 over x divided by something. Because when we divide these things out, it would be ln x times x over 1, which gets us back to the original function. Now we can use L'Hopital's rule to find the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. So take the derivative. The derivative of the top is 1 over x. <clears throat> when we take the derivative of the bottom, we get negative 1 divided by x squared. Therefore, we get negative x. And as we plug in 0, we're going to get 0. So we've been able to find the derivative using L'Hopital's rule. Now, there's also indeterminate powers. So a limit of the form, limit as x approaches a, f of x raised to the g of x can lead to several indeterminate forms. As I'd also discussed before, and 0 raised to the 0, infinity raised to 0, and 1 raised to infinity. So to overcome this problem, first we take the natural log, or we write the limit as an exponential. So here's an example. Find the limit of limit Find the limit of the limit of 1 plus sine 4x raised to cotangent of x as x approaches 0 from the positive side. So use L'Hopital's rule where appropriate. First, like always, plug in. Notice 1 plus sine 4 the x approaches 1 and cotangent x approaches infinity. So it is indeterminate. Second, we need to rewrite. And then we need to take the derivative. Now both of these are shown on the next page due to the high level of math involved. So I'm going to rewrite it as y equals 1 plus sine 4x cotangent x. And then the rules told us to take the ln of both sides. So I'm going to take ln and ln. When I do that, I can pull the cotangent out front. So I get cotangent ln times 1 plus sine 4x. Now I know that cotangent is the same thing as 1 over tangent x. Therefore, I can rewrite it as follows. ln 1 plus sine 4x divided by tangent of x. Now that I have something over something, now that I have a fraction, I can use L'Hopital's rule, take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom, and then plug in our variable, and we'll get our limit. So I took the derivative of the top, divided by the derivative of the bottom, and I got 4. So not all rational limits and trig limits similar to the previous problems will require the use of L'Hopital's rule. The following determinant forms lead directly to limits without any further manipulations. A number divided by 0, that always equals positive or negative infinity. 0 divided by a number equals 0. Infinity times infinity is infinity. Infinity plus infinity is infinity. Negative infinity times negative infinity is positive infinity. And 0 times 0 is 0. In these cases, we do not have to do L'Hopital's rule. And that's it. Thank you.